So first of all, um, I'm so thankful for being here in London for the first time and have the opportunity to present uh, this talk that uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, the things that I've learned uh, about going from development to production with projects uh, developed with Rust, Python, and using GitLab CI for that. So that's me. Well, not the cat. Uh, I'm a Mozilla representative from Mexico. Uh, I've been with the Mozilla community for the last eight years, and I'm a member of some of the communities that Mozilla have around the world. And also, I've been a speaker for, for a long time. Uh, I, I've been also part of the Mozilla Open Leaders Program, which is a program that gives people training and mentoring on how they can start their own open projects. I recently joined the GitLab Heroes Program. So this is the agenda that I, that I will follow. But first of all, my way to Rust. So I was part of the Firefox launch team in Mexico, a, a project that lasts from 2013 to 2015. Uh, you, you heard about M Mozilla uh, telling that the project will end in 2015. So um, after that, I was looking for a, for a project to contribute. But I was looking for a technical project. So that same year, I heard about ROS, which is the Mozilla's programming language, a uh, language that is being in, in development for since 2000, 2009. And I started learning about that so by reading the the book, uh, running the examples that are available in, in the official documentation, um, solving some exercises like, like the ones available here, and migrating some projects from Python to ROS. Well, at first that was the idea, but then I realized that it wasn't possible, and I will tell you why later and working on some personal projects like this one um, how many of you use html5 for creating presentations raise your hand how many of you know about review.js great so i started working on a on an application to have all my slides available from one place. So I created a gallery app, and, and this is the, the UI for, for, the, for the project. You can uh, take a look at the code at the GitLab repository. So I started this project with Python and migrated, migrating it for, from Python to Rust was uh, so simple. Uh, I rewrite the whole code uh, in Rust. But I, I also was working on another project, that a project that I, that I applied with to the Mozilla, program, Mozilla Open Leaders program two years ago. And for this project, I, I was using a Cairo, the Cairo FBG uh, Python library. I needed this a specific library because I, I, I was uh, converting from SVG files to PDF. So that's how I found out that uh, it was impossible to rewrite this part, this specific part with Rust because there is not an alternative uh, available in Rust for, for this uh, library. There is also not a uh, crate or library in ROS that that help us use Cairo uh, by running the, the Python library. So, um, and also I was working on a on a on an example for for a conference. Uh, 
I was going to talk about uh, fire rays and rust, but there is also not any not any library available uh, in Rust that we can use uh, for, for connecting to, to Firebase and retrieving data for, from a database. Well, there are three, but none of them are working. So, uh, the solution I found is to use Python. I had a background with Python, uh, been a Python developer for years, and also uh, taught Python in a, at a local university. So. That was the solution, I, and, and I found two crates, CPython and PyoTree, that I can use for executing or running uh, Python code directly from Rust, and that also can help us to write Python models using Rust code. Uh, I've been using both of them, but uh, for what I'm going to talk about, uh, I was using C Python. So I if you go to Crates.io, you could find uh, some libraries that you can use for um, running Python code from from Rust. But uh, the two that I talked about before uh, are the ones that are more mature on really use uh, Python and Rust for um, building applications. So if you already have Python configured, the only thing that you have to do is to install Rust. But if, if you don't, uh, if you're using any Linux distribution, you probably have a version of Python already installed. Well, at least for the distributions that have it as a dependency for some applications. But if we talk about Manjaro or, or Linux, uh, we don't have Python installed at the first. So um, this is the, the command that we have to run in, in the terminal for Linux distribution and, and Mac. Uh, this, uh, what it's going to do is to install Rustop, which is the official installer for Rust, and download the stable version of Rust. But for the project uh, that I'm going to talk about, we will use the nightly version of, of Rust. Um, we also need Git, uh, GCC. Uh, Rust needs a C compiler. And Cargo, which is uh, the package manager for Rust projects. And uh, talking about Python, we, we can use pipm to um, manage uh, the dependencies of our project. This is the website of Rustop, the, the official installer for, for Rust. Uh, when you go to, to that website, uh, it will detect the operating system that, that you run. So it will show you how to install uh, Rustop uh, on that specific operating system uh, for Windows. Um, you have to download the, the X file and install uh, other things. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not using uh, Windows for so many years, but that's not the point. So we have to create a new project. For that, we used uh, Cargo, uh, which is the package, package manager for, for Rust projects. And Cargo will generate uh, one file, that is the Cargo Tomo file, and a directory, the, the, SRC, the SRC directory. Uh, the Cargo Tomo file is a manifest for the application that will, con uh, will have information about uh, the project, uh, the dependencies that we need for the project. And at the first time, in the SRC directory, we, we will have a main.rs uh, file that will contain uh, an example of a Rust application. So well, after that, we um, have to move to the directory that Cargo created to set uh, the default toolchain for, for the project. 
but for for the for this kind of projects uh, where we were we will we'll be using uh, C Python or PyOtree for for the Python part. Uh, we need to use the nightly version of of Rust uh, and a Python directory where we uh, we're going to put the the Python models that, that we need for the project. Uh, edit the cargo tomo file, add a pip file or a requirements dot uh, txt file for the dependencies of of the Python model, and write uh, the Rust code and add the Python scripts. This is how a uh, cargo tomo file will look like. We have the, the name of the application, the version, others. If you're on, on Linux, uh, it, it will take the user uh, of your system and put it as uh, the author of the project. Um, that's been my nickname for the last 15 to 17 years. Don't ask me why I choose them. <laughs> and the edition, we have two editions of Rust, the 2015, that uh, are versions uh, before the 36 one ver uh, version of Rust and the 2018 that are the versions from 3016 to the actual one that is uh, the 39. The dependencies that we need for the project, uh, CPython for the Python part, uh, Cerda, uh, which is a, a library that help us with uh, reading information for, for from files like uh, JSON, um, and Rocket, which is a web framework for Rust. And, okay, uh, and for the bit file, this is an, an example for a project that use Firebase, and we need Firebase, and all of the, the other dependencies are dependencies of, of Firebase, so we need to put uh, those dependencies in the file and the Python version that, uh, that we will be using. Uh, it has support for Python 3.05 uh, and later, latest version. So this is an, an example of, of a Firebase database. Um, this is a, a database where I put information of an application that I was working on. Uh, the application, uh, it contains information about uh, speakers and it will read the, that database to generate uh, certificates of participation. Uh, I was using Python for, for this project, but as I told you before, uh, I needed to use Cargo. Uh, uh, in Rust, but there's no alternative, so I'm using the, the Python library. And for the Python part of, of the project, we have to connect to the, to the Firebase database, and retrieve the, the data, and um, save it to a variable that later we uh, will convert the value to, to JSON so that Rust can read correctly the, the data and pass it to the HTML5. So, I found more problems. I started learning this at the beginning of the year and unfortunately there is not enough documentation about it. So, the problems I found, uh, I didn't know how to call a Python script from the ROS uh, file. Didn't know how to pass a value from Python to ROS. Uh, in the GitHub repositories for, for these projects, uh, for, well, at least for the library that, that I'm using, there is no information how you can do those tasks. So I started reading and thanks to Stack Overflow, I found a solution. I am also, looking through uh, DuckDuckGo. I'm not using Google, so. This is part of the solution. Um, this is the code that helps us uh, 
uh, running the, the Python script from Rust, uh, execute the, the, the function that uh, connect to, to Firebase, retrieve the data, and this function will uh, give back that uh, value to, to Rust uh, as a JSON. So after that, uh, the Rust code uh, will uh, convert this, this uh, set of values to a hash map so that we can pass that uh, information to the HTML file. So after I solve all of these, these problems, uh, we have to compile the project, then run it. Uh, and if we go to the browser, we will see something similar to this and the GitLab repository where you can find this example. What is uh, doing? Create the Firebase database and show it in a HTML file. But let's talk about the deployment part of the, of the project. So uh, when we're configuring GitLab, uh, we have to choose um, a Docker image for running the test and also um, do the, the deployment part. But uh, there is a, an official image for, for Rust that also have uh, an option to choose uh, the, the version of, of Rust that we will use that could be uh, nightly or beta or, or stable. And uh, the problem is that the Python version that is installed in, in this uh, Docker image that is based on a, on a Debian image itself um, is that we need pipm and we need other tools to be installed. So we uh, customize that Docker image and generate another one that have pipm installed. And after that, that now that we have the Docker image that we will use, uh, I started um, uh, continue with configuring the project, but by creating a, a repository. Um, and upload the code using the terminal or a, a, a git client like git kraken. Uh, and if, if this is going to be an open source project, uh, even if it's a personal project, I recommend that those files should be in the repository. A readme file that will contain information about uh, the project in general, how you can configure the development uh, environment, um, any, any other information that people that, that go to the repository uh, needs to know. Uh, the license of the project, uh, information about how people can contribute, uh, and a code of conduct. And talking about the configuration, we have a git ignore uh, file. Um, we can generate that file using git, no, git ignore.io. Um, in, in the search bar, uh, we uh, write the language, uh, languages or technologies that we are using for a project, uh, like Python, Rust. Uh, I don't know how uh, many technologies it has support to. And another files that, that we need, the GitLab CI YAML file. Uh, the, the three that are listed here, I, I will explain it later. What are those files? The proc file is a, a way to tell, especially if you're using uh, Heroku, it's a way to tell Heroku where is the, the binary file uh, of the of the project, uh, we need to remember that we're um, develop developing this uh, project with Rust, so it will generate a binary file that needs to be executed. So that's the way that uh, how we tell Heroku what to execute. And as it is a, a project that when we are using uh, Rocket, so we have to specify that uh, it will get. Uh, randomly 
the, the port that, that the application will use. Um, a ROS config file that will contain the, the version of ROS that we were using for the project. And then the rocket.toml file that will contain uh, general information about the, the how it's going to, well, well the ports that it, it needs to be open so that, the, that we can access the, the, the project for the URL. The GitLab CI demo file, will, it will look something like this. Uh, we have the, 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 the build part and the, and the production one. Uh, this is a general example. This is not a complete example, but it should look like this. And something important, document your projects. Uh, as I told you uh, at the beginning of the talk, uh, I'm from Mexico, so uh, I'm living in a Spanish-speaking country, and I started learning English uh, 15 years ago. That means that I'm in a privileged position, but when we're uh, writing documentation, sometimes we forgot that not so many people have the opportunity to, to learn English or, or and I'm talking about English because most of the information and documentation of technologies are available in this language. So, if we live in a non-English speaking country, don't forget to write documentation in our native language. So, And I'm doing this uh, as a personal project at this moment, but I want the community to, to get involved. Uh, I'm writing articles to explain uh, all of these things. Uh, there is not enough information about how you can uh, configure GitLab for the CI-CD part uh, for ROS projects or how you can use uh, ROS with other technologies and languages like Python or any other, like Node, for example. So I'm writing here. You probably have heard about this site. Uh, any of you have heard about the practical depth? Great. So this is my profile. Uh, here you will find some articles that I've already written. And the idea is to have more information avail uh, available. But now I'm focusing on writing uh, articles in Spanish. But if any of you is interested in having this information in English, I, I could take the time to do it. 